Hi guys, it's me Julia. I am back with another video. This time it's a tutorial for the Kintsugi method. Um, I have two different ways that you can do it and I'll show you them both. I've done most of the steps so I'm going to kind of talk you through it. So I'll show you first of all what I did with I don't know if you remember somewhere around Kiln Opening 23 I had some dunting, quite a lot of dunting in my uh, white uh, clay dot balls um, which was such a shame because they're so pretty but the, the white clay just did not like just being glazed on the inside so it did dunting which is what happens when it cools down and it's the shrinking of the clay and the glaze doesn't shrink at the same rate I believe and it cracks so it leaves really sharp cracks that's how you know something is dunting because they're really really sharp edges um so with this one with these I did a method of uh, filling in the cracks first of all um Sorry, my brain's not working still. <laughs> so I fill in the cracks with tile grout. Ceramic is just, you know, tiles are ceramic. Um, so I thought, why not use tile grout as the, the fixing? So all I would do is you go in just get a like a teeny little bit and go into the crack and just fill fill the crack in it doesn't need much at all so you're just going in and filling the cracks go all the way down filling and filling like that so i have a few pieces this one um i'm part way through putting the gold on but I've been along and glaze, uh, grouted all this, the little crack area. So that's as simple as that. Filling in uh, any spaces, for example, on the back of this one, you can see there's a little hole and I filled in that space with uh, the grout. So super simple and super uh, cheap because this tub of grout was about two English pounds then once your grout is dry and it will just take minutes to dry because there's so little of it that one would take a little bit longer with it having a little um chunk missing I mean kintsugi itself is usually done with a tree resin Hiroshi? Yurushi? Hiroshi? I can't remember. <laughs> I've forgotten the name. But it's done with the tree resin and it leaves it food safe. These are not food safe done this way. But this is the kind of, um, this is my method. And then I'll show you the other method. So with this one, for example, this broke completely in half. I have super glued the two halves back together with a ceramic, strong ceramic glue. Um, I think there are certain glues that work and certain ones that don't. I think is it E6000 is a good one for ceramic. Um, but this was in two complete halves. So you can do this method by gluing it together and then going over the edge if there's any uh, spaces with the grout if it's just a crack you can just do the grout the other alternative for uh, sticking the two pieces together is the epoxy two-part epoxy and gold mica powder I had about half a teaspoon of two-part epoxy and the back of that little 
spoon there was just a little heap of makeup powder and I mixed it all in and that's made a gold glue more or less a gold resin so those are the two kind of methods I've got a teeny little piece here which was a lid for a coffee pot I made a long time ago and it sat broken for oh for a long time so I'm just going to pop a little bit of the resin oh that's probably too much a little bit of the resin on I'll have to clean it up because it's a little too much and then you just squeeze it in and the can you see there that one's a good one you should have enough resin to just squeeze out he's a little juicy on that side but just enough resin to squeeze out that gold um little trail of glue and that's the the method that you tend to see people using is the epoxy with the mica so the super simple really the one that i'm using is kind of my method for the cracks you could fill with a very thin paintbrush you could put that epoxy on the cracks let's have a look how that how that works on this one okay let's have a try of that let me move you down a little bit in fact sorry about my hand there this is actually already setting a little bit this um epoxy so in fact i'll try it on this bowl where i've already done a little bit with my other method so let's try that works nicely so actually it works quite well can you see those two pieces there it works quite well just to brush it on if you've already glued it but my other method here is to actually use a gold enamel nail varnish. So same thing, just with a brush that I then dip in to the nail varnish like so and paint it on to the crack I've already done it on this one one coat and I'm going to give it another coat you could put it on as thick or as thin as you want I just usually use the brush part of the nail varnish because I don't want to get it too thick on my paintbrush if I dip it in the pot I'm likely to make a mess I'm good at making a mess so that's that method there so that is the grout with the nail varnish on top and that is the other method of the epoxy brushed on let me just put this away just put my hand because i think i've got something on there and then this one is the 
Arushi. I do want to call it Arushi. I think it is Arushi. Similar to Arushi method with the epoxy and Mika blend. So I also have this is this is one I did probably two years ago. It cracked in the kiln, had quite a wide crack in it. Filled it up with tile grout and then painted um, a black gloss nail varnish over it. So, you know, that one is more hidden. You can see it, but it's more hidden. Um, this one I did just earlier. I broke it into several pieces on purpose. Oh, sorry, I'll just move you back up. Um, yeah, I broke it into several pieces on purpose so I could put it back together. I put it back together with glue, a super glue, like an, um, specifically for ceramics. And then grouted all into the cracks and the little centerpiece. And then I did it with the gold uh, nail varnish. And this one I'm just doing part way through. Don't know if you can see actually there is gold on this top section. Filled it. This is the um, white grout. And I'm just going to build up some of the light gold onto there. was just doing before can you see I'm not thinking straight today my brain is so uh... very slow so with this you can get a very similar uh, result because you can have it kind of if you're steady that is I'm not very steady because you just kind of want to trail the nail varnish along and you get that kind of squeezed out look that the epoxy gives you. The good thing with this one, doing it this way, is it is possible to change it. So if you put a colour on and go, you know, I'm actually not really liking that. Because I started this one with the dark gold. But if you decide that you don't like it, I then used no varnish remover to wipe the darker gold off. So you can see how it can look squeezed out like the epoxy method or you can just have it as a faint gold line. I'll show you it's more squeezed out looking on the bottom you see how it looks kind of juicy and then it's a little thinner on the top just to kind of give you the two different looks I quite like it with the slightly squeezed out but if 
I was to put anything on this, like I could, I'm not suggesting you could use it for food use, but if it's got like a little bumpy line, it might uh, not be as good to sit things on. So you might want to do the thinner line. If you're going to, say for example, I use this as a candle plate or something like that, um, it might be better to have thinner lines, but you do whatever works for you. But this was a charcuterie platter and that's the back of it. So in the kiln it moved and didn't uh, adhere with the glaze. You know, they shrank at different rates and moved and split. So it's not dunting, it just pulled away. But that's that one. So that's really it. It's as simple as that. For my methods, you know, I don't want to do complicated. Um, I don't have the energy to do complicated. So um, that's how I do it. I've mostly done the tile grout and the nail varnish because I've had pieces that just have cracks in them. Um, with pieces that are in two, if I already had the epoxy, I would have used the epoxy for this method, but I'm going to go in with that uh, bit of epoxy there and I'm going to do the trail of epoxy across the crack on this one. So that's it really guys, um, I hope that that has given you a little idea of how I do my kintsugi, <coughs> excuse me, swallowed some spit, you know, took on my own spit. Um, yeah, that's just how I do it. I'm sure there are other methods out there, um, but it's super easy and super cheap to do it my way and have yourself to go because as potters we always have cracks and uh, breakages and things so there's, there's plenty to practice on um you know and the spare pieces that you don't like smash them and fix them <laughs> gives you something to play with um so i'll leave the video there and i hope that you have a wonderful day and until the next time which i think might be another kiln opening video coming soon because i was going to do all of those different kinds of glaze combos um and i'm really getting into that mindset of trying different glazes together that don't usually go together so we'll see thanks a lot guys uh, thanks for watching and thank you for your support i really really appreciate it so if you do want to uh, see any of my glaze uh, combos and things they are over on my instagram or you can have a look at my uh, kiln opening videos uh, which are up somewhere on this list down below this video i think so see you later guys bye